How's it going gang, it's a final render here. And on the 29th of August 2019, Bethesda released another Inside the Vault article. We actually didn't do coverage on the Inside the Vault article last week because I was away at Insomnia, I was at I-65 in Birmingham. But now we actually have some nice new updates coming to the game, which are mostly bug fixes. Bug fixes is always something which we are very happy to see inside Fallout 76. And we've got a big bunch of them coming up in the next patch, which will be patch 13. So, let's go over this article and see what they have been discussing. But before we get into that, if any of you guys are curious, the bakery camp build is pretty much finished. I just need to get some final shots and then edit the video, and that will be out very soon. But, let's get on to the inside of our article. So first up, they are going to reevaluate the rewards you get from completing the Vault 94 Vault Raid, which I think is fantastic. They've already said that they're going to be removing the drill from the legendary drop rate at the end of the event. That was obviously very, very interesting that everybody was getting level 3 legendaries, but you could still get a completely inert drill as a reward for completing the hardest challenge of the game. So it's glad that's fixed, but also they're saying that they're going to increase the amount of XP components and aid items you earn when completing a mission. This is very nice, but it's also not quite what people wanted. Typically speaking, when people say they want more XP from completing the vault raids, they mean more XP per kill on a monster, not necessarily an XP reward at the end. It would have to be a very substantial reward for completing it in terms of XP. I've always been in the favour of, if you can complete the vault raid, you probably don't really care about XP, but I get it, you know, people do still want to get XP for killing a very hard enemy, so it's good to know that that's also coming in, we'll get a big bunch of XP for completing the vault raid, which is very cool, and also we'll get some of the aid items back, you do use maybe, you can use sometimes like 90 stim packs during these vault raids, so it's very nice to know that we're getting a little fix to that. And then after that, we're also getting some server stability improvements in here. Server stability is definitely something 76 has kind of always had a problem with, especially on console. But with the vault rates in particular, we've got to be doubly sure that it doesn't happen. Because if there is a disconnect from the team leader doing the vault raid, then everybody fails that vault raid. You do get all your items back, but unfortunately, you have to start the entire thing again and nobody wants to do that. And also, just server stability inside the vault raids means they are far too laggy. It can take up to a minute sometimes to open a door or close a terminal. So, really good that they are definitely going ahead and focusing on this. This is definitely a high priority for Bethesda. And I'm happy to see that we should get some server stability in the next patch, which will be patch 13. And after this, we have the interesting power armor exit bug. This is a bug I've actually never experienced myself in person. However, I have seen it happen multiple times. This is when sometimes you try to exit power armor and you were just stuck in one position. And the only way to fix it is to quit out the server. Huge annoyance overall. And obviously during the vault raids, sometimes fatal. It means you could essentially fail the entire vault raid and there's nothing you can do about it. And as I said, it's never happened to me, but I know it has happened to many high profile streamers and YouTubers during their live streams of the Vault Raids. And even last night, I was streaming with the Bethesda guys on Bethesda UK on Twitch and Mixer. And they actually had it on stream. They actually did get that bug to where they couldn't exit their power armor. So it happens even to the Bethesda developers. They're very much aware of it. And there is definitely going to be a fix soon. However, in the article, they don't actually say when. They just say they are definitely working on it. It's much more complicated than a single player game after all. So they need to find a way to fix it. And then roll it out in the next patch. Hopefully, they'll have it out before patch 13. But we'll just have to see. And after that, we have a little change to armor penetration. The article reads, We heard your feedback that non-ballistic weapons should receive armor penetration effects, and with patch 13, they will. As an example, energy weapons with the anti-armor legendary attribute will now bypass energy resistance. I never really use energy weapons myself, but this is a nice thing. They've always needed to be a little bit more powerful, the energy weapons, but now they'll be able to get armor penetration effects, which is really, really good. If you've got a cool legendary weapon, you should be able to get armor penetration on it. And after that, there is scout armor mods. If you guys aren't aware, not too long ago, they made it so that you could buy mods for the scout armor pieces from inside the Enclave. Really nice. People were very happy with that because it is very hard to get actual modifications for the urban and the forested scout armor sets but now there is a problem with it because the actual scout armor sets didn't actually tell you if you were buying an armor mod for an arm for a chest for a leg etc so you had no idea what you were buying it for and this actually happened to me i did buy a scout armor mod but it wasn't for the chest piece i had it was for something else i didn't even know what it was for because it wasn't labeled but now they are getting a label so you'll be able to go and do that quite easily which is fantastic because i love the idea of being able to just buy everything you need even if it's really expensive 
I love the idea that you can buy most modifications you need, even if they're very rare or very expensive to buy. And after that, we're going to change to the Possum Scout badges. Something which I wasn't aware of is that there is meant to be a very rare chance that you actually get given a Possum badge for completing Campfire Tales, Stings and Things, or Operation Tidy, which are some of the daily quests. I didn't realise that you, that was the case. But it turns out there is meant to be a rare chance that you do get some drop in when you complete those quests. And now that it's going to be re-added to the game because there was a bug with it to where it would never drop them. Maybe that's why I assumed you were never meant to get them. But in this case, we're now definitely going to be getting them back. So if you want to go and get some of the possum scout challenges done, get some of the cool camp items from their vending machines, this is something which you should be happy about. And thank heavens, no more jumping on the spot when connecting wires in the camp building mode. Whenever you're building the camp system, sometimes when you're placing wires, you would just start jumping on the spot. And this would really be a bit of a nuisance. We've seen it many times on live stream where my character is just jumping up and down being a nuisance. So now, if we have wires which we are placed inside our camp, we won't jump up and down like an idiot, which is fantastic. And also, crops, another fantastic change to the camp system. Crops are now going to receive a pair of fixes in the next patch that could prevent them from being placed in certain situations. And another that could cause your crops to appear that they are floating when they are planted on uneven terrain. Thank heavens that this is a the thing. There actually was an update to the giant billboards you can get, which would stop them from floating quite recently. So it's looking like the crops are getting the same treatment. It means that when you plant crops in the game, you don't just have them floating on giant bits of air, which is a very nice thing because it was really immersion breaking having that in there. So I'm glad that it's no longer going to be a matter anymore. And also finally, we have weapon and armor mod counts. This is again something which I didn't really realize I needed until it's been pointed out inside this patch. Essentially, now whenever you go to an armor or weapons workbench, it will let you know how many modifications you have unlocked for that weapon and how many you need in order to get every modification for that gun. My builder character inside Fallout 76 has often just been buying plans because there's been a plan I didn't know. So I buy it because I'm like, hey, I need that to complete the set. But now I'll actually be able to track what mods I need, which is really, really good. It also means that if there is, say, one weapon, which you only need two or three mods for, you could actually make it your mission to try to get all the mods for that weapon. You know, especially if it's your favorite weapon. So really nice change that I didn't know I needed overall, but it's really, really nice. And of course, after that, we do have a new legendary sale with the purveyor, which is a really nice thing. I really enjoyed the last one. It kind of encouraged us to scrap some of the legendaries, which we thought we needed, but in reality, we didn't. So we could get some new ones. I actually got a really nice scout armor chess piece, which is very cool. So we are getting another 25% off sale for the legendary purveyor. Mirror, mirror, and it means that we can go and buy ourselves some new armor, some new weapons, and also legendary modules if you are going and doing the vault raid something you may not know is that murmur sells the legendary modules which you need in order to complete the armor set so very good that there's a discount on them might be an idea to just go and buy all the modules you'll need ahead of time while they are on offer so this sale will be starting in fact, it started yesterday on August 29th at 12 p.m. EDT and will finish on the 3rd of September at 12 p.m. EDT. So it's not a very long sale, unfortunately. You really do have to get things in there. It's only for a couple of days, but it's a good opportunity to go scrap some legendary items down and get some really cool ones back. So thank you very much for watching this video, people. This has just been my very quick Inside the Vault update. I really enjoy doing these little update videos where we just read the article talk about what we think of it and see what kind of new stuff is coming. Now we're obviously in a very interesting part of Fallout 76's life cycle right now because we're only getting two major bits of new gameplay content until Wastelanders is coming out. We're getting one more Vault Raid coming out in the next few days and we'll probably be end up doing a live stream of that if this one turns out to be much better than the last one so make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel to see that. And also, we are having a big map added to Nuclear Winter. We're getting a map around Morgantown. But after that, we're just getting small quality of life improvements until Wastelanders, which means Fallout 76 developers have about two months to improve the game dramatically in time for Wastelanders, which whilst it kind of sucks that we're not getting that much new gameplay content after we get the new Nuclear Winter map, it's fantastic that they have such a long time to finish off Wastelanders and get it stable ready for that. Because I'm willing to say, a lot of the game's future depends on how well Wastelanders goes. If Wastelanders has a troubled launch, it's going to be very hard to persuade people to come back, even with Wastelanders in there. So it's really great that we are finally going to get some really cool patches 
over the next two months for that. And this is just the start. And we're going to get lots of quality of life improvements and it's going to be fantastic. So thank you very much for watching this video, people. My name has been Final Render and you guys have been the audience. Remember to check out all the cool Patreon people in the description below who help support the channel with their financial donations. Their donations go towards paying for the internet connection. They get towards buying atoms so we can cover all the latest camp items, etc. Really important part of the channel, the Patreon. And you can get some cool benefits like being in the credits of this video, early access to videos, things like that. Or you can become a level 3 YouTube member to where you'll be able to be on my 76 friends list. You'll be able to go and get early behind the scenes videos. You'll also be able to get behind the scenes videos. Once a week I'll do a behind the scenes video for you level 3 members. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye for now. Remember to subscribe to see the cool bakery build that we started just a few days ago completed. Bye bye for now.